The Thousand Worlds for Warcaster Neo Mechanica is here. Well, at least it showed up last week as part of the Kickstarter shipment, so I'm assuming you can buy it sometime soon, but I don't know. But the real question is, what's inside the book, and who should actually be buying it? The easiest thing to do is just read the back of the book as a good summary of what we're dealing with here. The Thousand Worlds Sourcebook is a definitive rules and lore resource for Warcaster Neo Mechanica tabletop miniature setting, compiling all previously published game rules into a single tome as well as updated force building requirements. Deep breath. That's all one sentence. <laughs> There's some copy issues with the book, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I don't know if that's... A, I mean, maybe it's a valid sentence. I really don't know. Grammar is not my strong point, but, you know. Took a deep breath to read it. But anyway, so this monster here is about 325 pages long, and there's several distinct sections to it. So this section right here is the lore of the game. It's just about 180 pages. And it's got a lot of information about the background of Warcaster Neo Mechanica. And considering that that's more pages than just these previous two little mini rule books combined, including everything, there's a lot of new content in here. Timelines about the history, you got some information on the, on the actual different factions, some of the sub-military units within those factions, details about how the forces are organized, some information on some of the spaceships. One note about that. Um, <laughs> So each of the factions has a page layout just like this, talking about like what is essentially their command ship or their military operation ship, whatever you want to call it, where they deploy their forces from. And just as a one little sci-fi note, it never hurts to reference real things to get an idea of scale. <laughs> it's really cool what they did here, the layout of this page. But one just one little thing that annoys me. If you look under Battle Force, it identifies 50 to 70 soldiers and 4 to 7 warjacks, 3 to 5 vehicles. And the length of the ship is 782 feet, and the beam, which is the width, 511 feet. And to me, for a ship of that size, 50 to 70 soldiers seem pretty small. So I went ahead and did a little bit of research. I'm like, this seems small. And what you can find out is the United States Navy has something called the WASP amphibious assault ship. It's one of the ways they would deploy the US Marine Corps into battle and that particular type of ship is actually very similar in size. It's a little bit longer than the uh, battle carrier you see here but it can support up to 2,000 Marines at one time. Yeah, 50 to 70 soldiers is a little small guys. Just just nitpick it a little bit. There's a lot of just beautiful lore here if you're really into that kind of a thing. Let's talk a little bit about the rules. So next up here would be the rules section of the book. And this amounts to about 60 or so pages. And this includes pretty much everything you got in these previous two rule books from the first two Kickstarters, as well as the one new force requirement or force construction rule set that comes along with the Thousand Worlds books. Now, in one of my previous videos, I don't remember which one, where I was talking about one of these two Kickstarters, I made the comment that Warcaster Neo Mechanica felt like a bit of a beta game, and that something more formal, more concrete was coming out. Um, but what you get here in the Thousand Worlds is pretty much an exact copy of what's in these two rule books already. It's just a little bit bigger text, a little bit easier to read, but nothing has changed. Um, Aside from like one or two typos. I mean, there, there may be a few small details here clarifying things, but what's in the Thousand Worlds is the exact same game that you get here. It got to the point where I almost thought that Privateer Press was stalking me at one point. I know it seems kind of creepy and a bit narcissistic, but game companies have kind of paid attention to what I do here before. Reading from page 199 of the Thousand Worlds, quote, Example. Jason's Alliance Firebrand is armed with a repulsor shield, assault rifle and bayonet, and null cannon. When the Warjack attacks, it can attack with the repulsor shield, assault rifle, bayonet, and the null cannon. Like, wait, that's the Warjack I have here, the way exactly I built it. A little odd. <laughs> and this happens to be the one Warjack that I did a painting video on way back when this game was first released. However, 
just to make sure I wasn't like going crazy, I did actually go back to the original Warcast rule book that was printed before I had the miniatures and that exact same examples in here. So no, they're not stalking me. It's just a really creepy coincidence. But <laughs> the point being though is for the most part, the rules and examples are word from word from this book. And nearly all the rules are in here. You got most of the basic core rules, the race rules are in here. Race as in the race mode um, type thing going on. There is one thing that's not in here that was in these two books though. Uh, there is one scenario that was removed. So the Thousand Worlds only has 11 primary missions, whereas these two books combined would have had 12. The one that is missing is Decay Constant from the original rule book, but fortunately that's kind of like your boring generic scenario, so you're not really missing a whole lot if you only get the Thousand Worlds book. Then we get to the appendices. Uh, first up is just a glossary, a couple pages defining some of the terms. Then you get what would be excellent for tournament players. And it is a copy of every single stat card that has been released so far. Because up to this point, if you wanted a stat card for one of the units, you would have to buy the miniature that comes with it. Which I'm sure Privateer Press would love the tournament players to buy every single miniature that's made for the game. But they're probably not going to do that. So if you really want to know how all the armies work and interact, and you're one of those people, it's all in this book. Then you get to the section I like to call, Please Stop Playing with Unpainted Miniatures. And it's a step-by-step -step guide for painting the basic kind of paint scheme of each of the four factions, as well as some kind of options and artwork for alternative colors. And because rule books also have to sell you and more stuff for the game, these last few pages here are just a catalog of all the pretty miniatures that Private 2 Press sells, except for the last page, which is a nice little appendix of the possible tokens you can use in the game, as well as the order of the turn, except it's missing a step up here. There are nine steps of the turn, not eight. <laughs> Talking about that copy comment, I don't know, that, that might have been a previous edit. I might not have left that one out. But there are a handful of typos in the book. Um, aside from this one right here, where there should be a step nine, which I assume you'd figure out because you know how to play the game, um, there is like one other typo where there's an extra like number for a list. I notice weird things like that. It's really not that big of a deal. Every game has it. You'll find Games Workshop stuff that still has little XX or page numbers in it every now and then, or at the time that Games Workshop left a section out of the rule book for Warhammer Fantasy Battles, I think it was 7th edition. <laughs> and your book came with a little sticky note in the front saying, here's how you're supposed to actually calculate score. It happens. It's just, I notice things like that. <laughs> I hate copy editing. It drives me nutty. Oh my goodness. But okay. And the one new rule pertains to these box sets right here. Each of the factions now has a cadre box set, which is sort of like those faction lists you had in War Machine where you kind of got certain bonuses for building a theme list, I believe in, you know. But um, the thing that comes down to it with this new rule, as far as I can tell, the rule for integrating these cadres properly into your list is only found in the Thousand Rules books. It's not actually in this box right here. I opened it up and took a look inside. It's not in there. And before recording, I downloaded the free PDF version of the rules that are on warcasher.com and it does not appear to be in there either. So let's ask the question then, who should actually be buying this particular rule book? So roughly, you can say there's several groups of players. You have the people who are really into the lore of Warcaster Neo Mechanica. You have your kick-face tournament players who are into, is it page 5 or page 6 in their opponent? I don't remember what it was. That was like 20 years ago at this point. <laughs> it almost was. War Machine is almost 20 years old. Whew. Oh boy. Oh boy indeed. Um, then you've got your more casual Warcaster players. And then of course, you've got brand new players to the game. So for those of you who are really interested in the lore, this book is incredible. Most of the book is lore. It's a beautiful section, awesome artwork, a whole lot of history, plenty to keep you busy for a long time reading. So if you want to learn more about the world in which this game exists, this book is an excellent choice because that is most of the new content. 
Um, for tournament players and people who want to beat the crap out of their opponents, the best thing about this book is that unit card section. This obviously only has all the stack cards that are available up to this point. Um, which is going to become outdated at some point, but I don't know, maybe they will keep this book updated every, each year and you can just buy a new one if you really want to keep giving Privateer Press lots of money. <laughs> Game companies are finding ways to try to turn these things into essentially subscription services because that's what businesses want to do if you haven't figured it out by now. Um, so that is definitely a good resource if you're into the whole tournament scene and really want to know what everybody does. Now, I should say one thing is not in here are all the cipher cards. So if you still want the cipher cards, you have to buy the original expansions that were these things right here. Um, at some point in the future, maybe the cipher cards will be available separately, but at the time of this recording, that is not an option. Before I talk about the casual players, let me answer the question, should new players buy this book? And the answer to that is no. Uh, the reason for it is this is not technically a comprehensive rule set to play in Warcast or Neo Mechanica. I mean it is, but you still need things like the cipher cards and the custom dice, which at the time of this recording are still only in the command box sets as well as the collision course expansion. So you're going to end up getting these things along with those. But then if you do enjoy the game and want to learn more about the lore, this would be a great thing to jump to. And then finally, for casual players, if you're not really into the lore and don't really care about knowing what every single unit in the game does, this probably isn't a great choice for you. You've got everything you have, well, nearly everything you have, except for the one cadre rule set thing, <laughs> in these two books right here. And to be honest with you, from my years of playing Warhammer, these thin paperback rule books are a lot more desirable than these monsters right here. Especially when over half the book is lore and you don't feel like flipping through that to find rules. These things are just that much more convenient and for many players they'll still be bringing these things along anyway. So if you just want to play you know, Warcaster don't really care who the Iron Star Empire and the Marcher World Crusader people are. I know I intentionally used the wrong names. That's the point. Bad joke. Um, you don't need to buy this book. This is for the hardcore super fans. <laughs> it's an awesome book, though. I do enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy reading all the lore. <laughs> if you haven't realized, I love Warcaster New Mechanica. It's a fantastically awesome game, and I almost spilled paint on my rule books. Hopefully that gives you enough information about the Thousand Worlds rulebook slash sourcebook and whether it's a good choice for you. Um, the one thing I haven't mentioned because I don't know the answer is the price. There is not actually a price on the back of the book. So presumably head over to privateerpress.com at some point and it'll be up there. Or hopefully consult your local tabletop game store. They should be able to order it for you sometime in the not too distant future. Well, thank you guys all for watching. I think in the upcoming video, we'll take a look at this first box set for the Alliance Regulators. Get the miniatures out, get them assembled, and do that whole little preview thing. And I have a few more miniatures that came with the Kickstarter. Some of the wild cards, as well as this really cool faction patch. <laughs> so, I don't know. I guess I got... I must have chose Iron Star Alliance at some point. I mean, clearly I got the box for it, so I must have told them to send me that too. And along with it came with one of those little cloth patches you can put on a coat or something. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's really cool when you get the logo and the slogan of the Iron Star Alliance, and you better believe it sounds fascist. <laughs> it's exactly what I would expect from a sci-fi fascist empire. All right, guys. So once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefields. So until next time... Have a good week or so.